Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, before I introduce today's guest, I just want to let you know that Amazon has discounted my book, the 10th anniversary edition of Unprocessed, 28%. Today, or for a limited time, so if you haven't got a copy, why not grab one while it's on sale? It makes great holiday gifts, and there's beautiful photos inside as well. So this is day two of a 10-day experience known as the plant-based bundle. A bundle is when a group of contributors put together books, ebooks, courses, not books, books, but ebooks, courses, and programs, all plant-based, of course, and offer them for a ridiculous price. So for $50, you're literally getting $8,600 worth of content if you were to buy each course, ebook, and program separately. There's over 200 contributors. Every bundle is different. So a lot of people say, well, I bought the last bundle. I'm, I participate in a lot of bundles for a lot of contributors that, that develop these bundles, maybe sometimes two to four a year. So they're always different. They don't repeat the content. You'll see some of the same contributors, but it's always new content. At least that's my understanding for the prerequisite. This stuff is amazing. Just click the link. Even if you don't buy, look at the content. It's amazing. So we have one of the contributors today. I'm meeting her for the first time from Portland, Oregon. What caught my eye is when I got the bundle, because as a contributor, they give it to you for free. That's one reason to be a contributor right there, because it's amazing. She has this dessert book, and I saw this photo for like this brownie cake that was like, it just spectacular. You can see it on, on her Instagram page too, but she's going to be making healthy desserts, which are perfect for this time of year, that will satisfy your sweet tooth without any of the bad stuff that you usually find in desserts, regular desserts, or even unhealthy vegan desserts. Her name is Amanda Sick, and please welcome her to the show. It's very nice to meet you. Hi, Chef AJ. Thank you so much for having me. We're so oh, excited oh. to be here. Of course, well, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. And, you know, I, I could only have about 10 people on the show, but that picture was, that, that's what I was like, I got to have that one on. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. That yeah. is a beautiful cake. I mean, I hope I'm going to put a link to it because people need to see that. I mean, you could eat that and be vegan and without sugar. It's incredible. Yeah, that's what I love doing. I mean, this is my first time being in the bundle. Um, and I love creating, you know, healthy. I've always had a big sweet tooth. And so when I went vegan and then plant-based, whole food plant-based, um, you know, I tried to find ways to make, you know, sweet desserts and stuff that would satisfy me, but that were a lot healthier for me. So that's, that's why my book, um, is it's called simply sweet and it's all like refined, sugar-free, gluten-free, uh, vegan, obviously, um, recipes in there. So it's yeah. beautiful. Now you look, you look very young. So please tell me your story of when you went vegan and why and how, because a lot of times there's some steps involved. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I just, yeah, I just turned 26 last month. Um, and I've been vegan for almost five years now. Um, so I grew up eating like standard American diet, lots of fast food, processed sugar, um, very unhealthy. Um, <laughs> and so I, yeah, for the first 20, when I was in college, I started um, I did go vegetarian first. So I watched some documentaries and, um, kind of, it was kind of a challenge I was doing with my friend and roommate at the time. Um, she thought, you know, let's try to go vegetarian. And so, um, yeah, I went vegetarian first and then I had no intention at the time of going vegan. I never really, I didn't know much about veganism or, you know, that way of eating or lifestyle or anything. Um, I just thought, you know, I'd try to be a little healthier and I want to go vegetarian, did that for like seven months. Um, and then I started learning more about the dairy industry and the egg industry and stuff. And then, um, decided I also was dealing with, um, like severe acne too. And I know dairy is super inflammatory and can make that worse. And so, um, yeah, so I ended up going vegan for ethical reasons for the animals. And then, um, at the time when I went vegan, uh, almost five years ago, still wasn't, you know, I was still eating a lot of sugar and a lot of processed vegan food and stuff. Um, so I wasn't, you know, I was healthier than I was on the standard American diet for sure. Um, but, uh, it's really when I started, you know, cutting out refined sugar and gluten and certain things and processed vegan food and switched to more of a whole food plant-based diet, um, that I started seeing drastic changes in my health and my skin and, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then through going vegan and plant-based, it, it made me a lot more creative in the kitchen, um, really sparked my passion for, you know, plant-based food and health in general, um, just creating recipes and all that. Um, so I started my blog, my page and yeah, this is my first time in the bundle. So I'm super excited and yeah. Well, I love that, you know, you went, I mean, cause we're, I'm a lot older than you, but you went, you know, if you going vegan, like at 21, that's only, I mean, when vegan at 17, you have a very long, healthy life ahead of you, I anticipate. 
Yeah, I plan on it. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I, you know, made the changes that I did at a young age for sure. Because yeah, a lot of people wait until it's almost too late. And it's usually because they get some lifestyle disease and they heard like from Forks Over Knives or one of the documentaries that there's a possibility for reversal. But I think it's so great because when you have that ethical piece, even if you're maybe a junk food vegan at first, you you don't, you, you have this foundation where it's like, you're, you're just not going to stop being vegan oh, because sure. your ethics really don't change for the most part. I always say I'm vegan for the animals, but I'm plant-based for my health. Cause yeah, you can be vegan and it doesn't mean healthy. Like a lot of people think, you know, automatically think vegan is healthy and that's not, not always the case. So did any of your friends and family join you in your journey or were you a lone wolf? Uh, no, uh, well, one of my friends, the one we went vegetarian with, she was vegan or she was plant-based for a while and then um, vegetarian. But as far as like family and stuff, I don't really, I'm the only, yeah, I'm the only one really in my family um, and friend group mainly that it like lives this lifestyle. I do try to encourage, obviously I don't want to like force my beliefs on anyone, but I do try to encourage everyone in my life to eat healthier and stuff. Um, Why not? Force, force. No, I'm, just kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. So what's Thanksgiving going to be like for you being the pretty much only one? Well, I'm also the, one of the main cooks in my family too. So, I mean, I, like last year I did, um, I made mostly all the food and I just made everything, you know, everything a vegan, like whole food plant-based version. And you know, people enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> I've tried that my brother and certain people have definitely made changes and towards a healthier lifestyle. And so I'm just trying to keep encouraging family and friends to do so. Yeah. That's now that, that book, I, I, I know that you have an ebook, but the book you showed, can people actually get it in a hard copy? Um, no, I just kind of just printed, had this printed to show for the show. Um, but I don't, so I don't have like hard copies printed. It's just an ebook for now, but one day, one day I'm going to have, you know, yeah, think about it. Cause it's, it's quite beautiful. So it, what are you going to make for us today, man? Yeah, so a few different things. They're all very simple. A lot of my, all of my recipes, I try to make very simple, um, like minimal ingredients, like probably 10 ingredients or less for most of them. Um, so the first one I'm going to do since it's fall, I figure like caramel apple is kind of a thing. So I have these caramel apple oat cookies that I like to make. Um, they're really good for breakfast. They're just sweetened with fruit. Um, they're good for breakfast or like an on the go snack. Um, so I'll do those. And then I have my raw vegan brownies. I like doing a lot of raw recipes too, like raw desserts. Um, yeah, desserts, raw desserts are some of the best desserts. Um, and so I have my raw brownies, uh, are just made with dates and a few other ingredients. Um, and then at the end, I do have one of my favorite things to make is nice cream. And so um, I'll do my raw brownie and ice cream at the end once I have the brownies made. So no, people love desserts. And for this time of year, it's perfect. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I guess I can get started with the oat cookies. So basically I just have some rolled oats here. Um, I do always try to buy organic for oats because they're one of the most highly sprayed with glyphosate. So I want to try yeah. it can. Um, so I always recommend trying to get organic, but so I have the oats and then I have a flax egg. Uh, which is basically just ground flaxseed and water that's been sitting for a few minutes and it kind of um, helped bind the, the cookies together. Um, so I'll put that in there. Do you think flax eggs really do anything? Because I mean, there have been times where I've been out of them and I'm just, I, and I've been out of it and, it, and the recipes seem to work. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Adds a little more. A little more oomph to it, maybe. Something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I have cinnamon. And then I have, I made a date, um, like a date caramel sauce. Basically it's just dates blended up with some water and a little cinnamon. Um, so I'll put some Dates are the best. I mean, I don't know why not people ever eat sugar because there's dates. They sure. taste so much nature. better. Yeah, it's nature's candy for sure. Yep. I never even knew what dates were when I was growing up. And Yeah, same here. Uh, oh, and then I just added in some chopped apples too. So it's just oats, cinnamon, the date caramel, and then the chopped apples. I'm just going to mix that well. You have a preferred type of cinnamon. There's, there's so many different kinds. Um, I don't. I just have like the standard. I don't, I don't, I've heard of like, what are the other types of cinnamon? I mean, there's like Vietnamese, there's cassia, there's just, I don't know, people say there's different. I mean, I, I do know that some of them seem to taste a little bit sweeter. Yeah, I don't know. I just have 
standard. I also have just Costco cinnamon too. Yeah. <laughs> So once you get it all mixed up, and I'll see, it's kind of how it looks there. And then I just have the oven preheated to 350. Um, so I'll just scoop these out onto a parchment lined baking sheet. And they're super quick and easy to make too. They're only, you only have to bake them for like 10 to 12 minutes or so. And then I have some of the extra caramel I'll like put on top afterwards. How do you store the cookies once they're made? Um, I'll just keep them in a container and you can put them in the fridge, but they'd, they'd be fine sitting on the counter. I would do for a few days, I would imagine. How many times, how many years have you done the bundle? Have you been in the bundle? Oh gosh, you know, it's funny because with these particular producers, John and Helena, I think this is only my second year, but I've been doing bundles. People don't realize since like, because I didn't always do YouTube every day since yeah. 2014. No Meat Athlete used to have one every Thanksgiving that I was in. I even do my own bundle sometimes. And so, yeah, I, I, I mean, when usually when I'm offered, if I have a, a new product that I can give, I'll do it because mainly because I just want the product because it's amazing. Oh, I know. It's really, it's, it's a really amazing deal. I bought it a couple years ago. And even when I bought it back then, it was like definitely worth the money, but it's even way bigger than it is than it was then. Like there's so much more in there this time. And so definitely a good value. You know, what happens is it's always like the day after, please, can I buy it? And they won't, they yeah. won't. The day, oh, once it's gone, yeah. they do we not ever be. make an exception. Yeah. <laughs> only a 10 day thing. It only comes down a couple times a year. Okay. Okay. So I'll just put these in the oven for about 10 minutes or so. Yeah, I'll make oat cookies often too. And I'll do like, if I don't do that kind, I'll do like mashed banana with it and like peanut butter. Um, there's lots of different ways you can customize them. Which food processor do you have? Oh, uh, it's a pretty old one. It's just the Hamilton Beach one. <laughs> I think I need to get it. The lens kind of. <laughs> it's a pretty good. It's still, I had a Hamilton Beach once. They're pretty good. Here's a question from a live viewer named Cindy. Before going whole food plant-based SOS free vegan, I was addicted to sugar. I'm still hesitant to eat sweet foods. Should I not be? Um, that's a good question. Um, I would say, I mean, yeah, I used to, I would say I was addicted to sugar. I grew up on processed sugar and would eat, you know, sit and eat pints of ice cream in one sitting and just all, anything you can imagine. Um, but I would say that um, once you, you know, it is hard at first to give up sugar. Um, once you, you know, start having things like dates and bananas and more natural, you know, fruit, um, the bot, I, you know, those are more natural sugars that have a lot of health, ben have a lot of benefits, you know, um, especially dates. Um, and so I wouldn't be, you know, afraid to, to eat it. I think, um, you know, your body, your body will crave, you know, the brain runs on glucose. And so your body does need those natural sugars from fruit. And um, yeah, I would say there are a lot of healthier ways to still enjoy sweet treats for sure. <laughs> Yeah. And I would always say, just do an experiment. You can find out if it works for you, but it, if you just completely abstain, you'll never know. Exactly. Eating dates is so much different than eating sugar though, in my opinion, because I was addicted to sugar till I was 43. I mean, that's all I ate. And I was having Coke Slurpees for breakfast and Dr. Pepper's all day long, regular. And I find that with dates, it, you know, because they're a whole food, they're, they're satisfying. They have water and fiber and vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and antioxidants. And my body does not react 
to a dessert made with dates and oats, like it does to a dessert made with sugar and flour. It won't spike your, you know, it doesn't give you a blood sugar yeah. spike, like, you know, the processed white sugar and all that. Um, yeah. With all the fiber and vitamins and everything that's in there. Yep. So yeah, dates are good. I always tell people like, if you want a healthier alternative, take a date and just put a little, you know, peanut butter or nut butter in it with a little dark chocolate maybe, or and it tastes like candy, honestly. <laughs> oh my God. Joyce says, many of your guests use the oats. Some plant-based doctors discourage eating oats. Please tell me which plant-based doctor, Joyce, because I have never heard that. Every doctor I've had on this show encourages, especially for lowering cholesterol, like Dr. Esselstyn. So my opinion on oats is they're amazing, that unless you're allergic, why would you avoid them? They're a gluten-free whole grain. I mean, I recommend people eat the whole oat groat if possible, but I mean, I have never heard that some plant-based doctors discourage eating oats. So please type in the chat, which ones you're talking about, because I've never heard that personally. Yeah. Yeah. With oats, the only thing I would say is, yeah, try to get more organic if you can. <laughs> um, Dr. Gregor doesn't discourage oats. Dr. Furman doesn't discourage oats. Dr. McDougall doesn't discourage oats. Dr. Will Bolshewitz. So I have no idea who you're talking about. Because <laughs> all the ones that have been on this show, eat them and encourage them. Yeah, I love oats. <laughs> Me too. I don't like them so much in oatmeal. Like I'm not an, I don't like the texture of oatmeal, but I love oats. I use them in almost all my dessert recipes. Yeah, I use, I make oat flour all the time. Just blend it up into oat flour and use yeah, that. It's so much cheaper to just do it yourself than to buy it, you know? Yeah, it definitely is. Um, so I can start with the brownies here. So I have um, the dates pitted. And if your dates aren't very soft, you might want to just soak them in a little water for a little bit just to soften them. But so I just have the dates there. And then sometimes I'll just process the dates a little first to get them to stick together a little bit. Um, loud. <laughs> Do you like Medjool better than Deglet Noor? What was that? Um, do you prefer the uh, Medjool dates to the Deglet Noor? Oh, yes. Yeah, I always get the Medjool ones. And then I'll add in the walnut. Then cow powder and then some unsweetened shredded coconut and then I have um, just a tablespoon of hemp seeds and a tablespoon of cacao nibs in here and then I just have this is optional I mean you could just add extra dates but I have some date syrup that I'm just going to add in here too just a little just a tablespoon of that That's everything. Do you buy your medjool dates pitted or do you pit them yourself? Um, I usually buy them with the pit. Um, I have bought them pitted before. It is sometimes more convenient that way. <laughs> I find sometimes even with pitted dates, they have pits. Yeah, I found that too. <laughs> I noticed sometimes the pit, the ones with the pits seem to be softer. Seems sometimes when they're pitted, they're not good as soft, but. Maybe that dries them out a bit. Is your beautiful book that you showed, is that the book that's in the bundle or is it a different book? Sorry, what was that? The beautiful book that you held up, is that the book that you are that is in the plant-based bundle or do you have a different offering? Oh, uh, no. Yeah, that's the one that's in the bundle. Yeah, that's my only, that's my yeah first recipe book that I've made. Um, so yeah, that's the one in the bundle. I think I need to add a little bit more. Well, Melody says that medjool dates are expensive in Paris, but the deglet or the fresh dates aren't. That's interesting. Yeah, medjool dates tend to be more expensive than the deglet nor. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, they're not, not always the cheapest, but. 
Eric says, how do you store walnuts and how long do they stay fresh? I store all nuts in the freezer because number one, if I ever buy them, they're a trigger food for me. So I want them out of sight and I have a double layer freezer where I don't have to see the bottom layer. And also it keeps them fresh. Yeah, I keep mine in, in the fridge, um, but the freezer is a good idea too. That lasts longer that way. Just keep them in jars in the fridge. I need a bit more moisture. Are you going to put those in a specific pan? Um, so I have this little dish here just with parchment paper. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to kind of press it down in there. And then I just set them in the freezer for just um, just a couple minutes, just to kind of firm up a little bit. Yeah. You know what I have? Do you ever see the little Wilton has a brownie pan where it's like 24 little cubes? It's silicone. And then you can press each one and make your own little brownie. Yeah, that's smart. I should get one of those. <laughs> Barbara says, so how good is this $50 course? It's not a $50 course. It's a bundle, which means there are over 200 courses, eBooks, and programs. And the only way you can know what's in it is to click the link because it would literally take me probably a half an hour to read you the titles of every single course and offering. Yeah, there's so, so much. Please just click the link. I keep posting it. It's in the chat and the show notes right here again. <laughs> Yeah, and some of the some of the books and I mean there's a course in there that I think is like three hundred dollars alone. So I know it's it's a lot of the offerings are just uh, worth more than the price of yeah. the bundle. Yeah, I don't know how they do it, but it's pretty it's a pretty I incredible. Think, I think this time it's almost like nine thousand dollar value. Yeah, eighty six hundred dollars if bought separately. So I, I'm pretty sure that with over two hundred courses, you're going to find something you like for. Oh, yes. There's something for everyone in there for sure. You don't yeah, and even if you're not vegan, like there's you know. I think there's, there's, there's walk courses, there's cooked courses, there's books and programs. It's yeah, that's why I click the link and then the page will appear with all the contributors, their picture, their social media followings to see if you if you like them. Yeah. So yeah, there's workouts, there's yeah, workout. Oh, that's right. There's also there's ab workouts. That's right. I forgot about all the fitness stuff in there because that's usually not something I do. <laughs> <laughs> Grow your own microgreens course, lots of different stuff. Freezer for a minute. And the cookies should done right now. Your book in there is a dessert book, isn't it? Yeah, it's in a and it's a class. It's a it's a it's a class that I did for two hours and then it comes with the PDF and it is desserts. Oh awesome. Yeah, that's what I contributed this time. Oh yeah, the cookies just took 10, about 10 minutes to make. And then yep. I'll just, you know, top these with some of the more, some of the um, more of the date caramel sauce. I always have date paste made, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I make it a lot. I should just make a big batch at the start of the week and stuff it on hand because I use it all the time. Yeah. Cause you can freeze it even. Oh yeah. You can freeze it. I've frozen date paste for sure, but it lasts for, not forever, but it lasts quite a long time in the refrigerator. Oh, 
And I feel like oat cookies too, or if anyone who's watching with kids, um, they're a great way to, you know, they're a great thing for kids too, and they're just sweetened with fruit. Yeah, it's a silicone pan. I'll, Melody, I will look for it and then I'll post a link. Mulligan says oats are very easy to sprout. I've, I tried sprouting, but it was just too labor intensive for me. Yeah, I've never tried that. <laughs> you can buy, a lot of times you can buy things already sprouted, but then they're going to be a little bit more expensive. Yeah. Okay, let me find that really cool brownie pan. You have a special cocoa powder you prefer? Um, I just get, I get the cacao powder. This is organic with cacao. Yeah, I've seen that at Costco. Um, if I remember correctly, cacao and cocoa are, like cocoa is just more processed, is that right? Well, I think cacao supposedly is raw, but I'm, I'm not sure how it can be because don't they have to do something to the, do, do they just yeah, grind the beans? Powder, you'd think so. I've heard that's less processed, but. Ooh, wow, the silicone brownie pan is on sale for less than $9 today on Amazon. I will put the link in the chat right now. It's very cute. You just press them in. Yeah, I'll have to check that. I don't know why you say the bundle doesn't look, work with computers and tablets because that's exactly how I access it is on my computer. I mean, I find it's much more hard to access all the content on my phone. Basically, I just downloaded everything. It's in my fold, it's in a folder and I put it on a flash drive just to make sure in case something happens to my computer. And then I have all the little books and I just click them and I'm on a computer right now looking at it because I'm looking for something that yesterday's guest was Raw Chef Yin and she said she had a beet Wellington and I'm looking for that recipe. That sounds good. I just wish they had put it in alphabetical order because I'm having trouble finding her book. But yeah, that's the nice thing about the bundle. So you can just download the PDFs and just even if you don't use it right away, you know, you'll you'll download them, you'll have them forever. And then you can share them with friends and family. And okay, so the brownies I just set in the freezer just to set up, set for a little bit. Um, and then I have this, this is optional, but you can do I make this like frosting for it, and it's all it is is um some raw walnut cashew butter and then a little cacao powder and, and date syrup um, and a little bit of water to thin it out. It's kind of like a chocolate frosting to go on there. Yum. Put that on there. Yeah, these are pretty rich, but <laughs> they're, they're pretty good. Hey, so what are you making for Thanksgiving since you're the primary cook? Um, I'm not sure. I honestly haven't really... <laughs> I haven't really planned. I know I need to, it's only a few days away. It's like but, less than a week away. Um, and last year I made like a um, mashed potatoes and gravy, uh, mac and cheese, um, pumpkin pie, a big um, like kale fall salad. Um, what else did I make? I've made like stuffed acorn squash in the past as like kind of a main dish. Um, yeah, I'll probably do something similar this year. Sounds very good. What do you usually do for? Well, you know, it's so funny because I, I wasn't invited anywhere because I just moved to a new city. And so I, I decided to host a meetup at a organic vegan restaurant that's open and I'm doing that. And then all of a sudden I got an invitation. So now I'm doing both. And so I'll just probably bring something. I'll make it like a, like a, a, a stuffing that's grain free and gluten free that I like to make in a caramel nut tort. Nice. Yeah. It's fun when you don't have to do the whole dinner, you know, and you just do like one or two things. It makes it a lot easier. I actually did have a Thanksgiving dinner already. What am I saying? I have, did a webinar for Forks Over Knives. And so because it was a webinar, I had to pre-make everything so that I could show it, you know, in real time. So because I had doubles of everything, there's no way I could eat all that food. So we actually had a Thanksgiving dinner last week, which was very nice. That worked out. <laughs> yeah, it worked out good. Well, I don't know if you've seen the show, Amanda, but there's one question that everybody wants to know the answer to, which is, what do you eat in a day to stay so healthy? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Every day is a little different. Some days, um, 
and it depends too because I live in Oregon and so um in the summer and the warmer months like I'll I'll eat a lot more raw and I try to eat very high raw those times I just crave a lot more fruit and just fresh like juices smoothies um big salads stuff like that um but this time of year when it's a little colder I still eat a lot of fruit I always <laughs> um always have fruit I always break my fast with fruit um but I usually fast until like noon or so sometimes later sometimes sometimes one or so I don't always have breakfast um but I yeah I always have fruit and then I'll have um when it's like colder out I like making like curries stir fries um roasted potatoes and roasted veggies and squash and stuff like that um so yeah I eat a lot of I'll have smoothies a lot too and then I'll usually have like my like one main I don't really eat like three meals a day I would say I eat like one main meal um along with the fruit and like a smoothie or something um but yeah every day is a little different but I do try to get a big variety of um plants into my diet every week and a lot of um yeah a lot of variety yeah do you exercise it's pretty cold in Portland isn't it yeah yeah right yeah it's like probably 40 degrees or so um yes I do I go to the gym I try to go five days a week um try to go in the mornings when I can. Sometimes if I miss a morning, I'll go in the evening, but I prefer morning workouts for sure. Um, but yeah, that's another thing. Just changing my diet in general just made me a lot more health conscious and, um, and got more into fitness and working out. And, um, cause I've had a lot of family members deal with health issues and just things that I want to do what I can to, you know, prevent, um, myself and dealing with as well and just want to try to be as healthy as I can yeah working on something that I try to do as much as I can um so the brownies I just topped them with the frosting and I put some cacao nibs on top um and I'm just going to pop it back in the freezer for just a couple of minutes But yeah, it does get pretty cold in Oregon <laughs> and it rains a lot. <laughs> yeah. The summers are beautiful though. Were you born and raised there? Yeah. Yeah. I was, well, I'm from uh, Sandy, Oregon, which is a pretty small town, um, about 40 minutes from Portland. And there's a pretty big vegan community up there, isn't there? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a good place to be vegan. Yeah. There's a lot of, although I wouldn't, most, a majority of the places are more like, there's a lot of junk food, vegan places and stuff. Um, there are some healthy options too, but yeah, there's, there's a big vegan community in Portland for sure. What about restaurants? Have you been to black and white? Black and white? Yeah. I haven't. Huh. Is that in Portland? Yeah. I mean, I haven't been to Portland. I've spoke at the Portland Veg Fest a couple of times. That's I remember. And then Blossoming Lotus. Those were the two that I went to. I love Blossoming Lotus. I've been there many times. <laughs> <laughs> Their raw nachos are very good. Oh, wow. I had raw nachos when I was in LA last month for my little dog's surgery at Sun Cafe. And it was like literally like the best meal I have ever had. You've been to uh, Peace Pies in San Diego? No, I, you know, I've never eaten at a vegan restaurant in San Diego for some reason. Yeah. Peace Pies in the Village are two, if you ever are in San Diego, you should go definitely go to the Village and Peace Pies, two of my favorite places down there. Because I'm in San Diego quite a bit just at the airport when I go to my job at Rancho La Puerta several times a year, but there's just doesn't seem time and I have to take a later flight to do that. But it's pretty cool. They actually have like a, a vegan fast food place that's actually like healthier. Like it's called Evolution Fast Food in San Diego. And it's like a drive up, like it's one of the only, I think it might be the only one, like only vegan fast food like drive up in the country, I believe. Um, and they have, it's mostly like healthier, like whole food options which is nice too why well, can't every place have that you know need more of that you know with the amount of fast food we have everywhere on every corner we need some, <laughs> we need some healthier options oh, it's hard to compete with mcdonald's oh, yeah. yeah and the prices yeah that's for sure um so i have i'm gonna make the nice cream here so i just have i think this is about three or four frozen bananas i believe just chopped up into chunks um, I always try to have frozen bananas on hand because I use them for nice cream, smoothies, um, 
all kinds of stuff. I think there's even a nice cream book in the bundle. Like it's all, all just nice. Cream. Oh, is it the one from Nate, Nate Maris? If so. Oh, that's a fabulous book. What did you go to college for? Um, I went to University of Oregon, Eugene, and I I went to um, I majored in advertising and design and communications. Um, so I'm a graphic designer. That's probably why your desserts look so pretty. People should really check out your Instagram page. I put the link and look at that brownie cake that I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's on my blog too. The cake uh, I made that recently for my birthday and um, put the rest the recipes up on my blog as well. So. Um, that was a fun one to make for sure. <laughs> but yeah, I've always been pretty creative and artistic and into art and everything. So I think I, that's definitely transitioned over into the food aspect of things. And that's perfect, especially for desserts. Yes. <laughs> what kind of workout do you like? Asks Rachel. Um, it's a good question. I do a lot of weights. Um, I'll do, um, I kind of do, I'll try to go five days a week. So I'll try to do one day I'll do like back biceps one day I'll do like legs um like glutes hamstrings that kind of thing and then I'll do chest shoulders triceps um and one day I'll do like cardio I try to <laughs> I should probably try to do more cardio but I'll do like abs and cardio um but yeah I'm like mainly like weightlifting um I've always been I grew up playing softball and I've always been into sports and stuff too um I've always been super active and I think that helps even with how unhealthy I ate as a child yeah. helps because I was very active. So, um, I didn't have any like severe health issues, thank gosh, but, but you know what they say, you can't, uh, you can't outrun a bad diet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Diets, diets, very important. Um, yeah, I could have done a complete 180 with my diet for sure. <laughs> Oh, so that's really interesting. You you're using your food processor, which is fine for the nice cream. Uh, so people that don't have like a Ventec or a Vitamix or a Yonanas or a Nutra Milk or a Ninja Creamy, they can use their food processor. I have my, yeah, I use my Vitamix too a lot. Um, but yeah, the food processor is a good option. I, I'll make an ice cream. Sometimes I like it more soft. And so I'll do it in the Vitamix and it'll be more creamy. And like, but sometimes I like, if I do it in the food processor, I notice it's more of like a thick consistently consistency and I'll scoop it out like with the ice cream scoop and it's more like I like the texture that way but I do it in the Vitamix a lot too um, have you heard of the ninja creamy that's my new favorite toy it boy it really makes yeah. it like ice cream yeah I'd like to get one of those <laughs> they'll probably have some black friday sales yeah mm -hmm. okay And yeah, when you do it in the food processor, you will have to just, um, you know, take the lid off, mix it around a couple of times, um, just because I don't add any liquid when I do it in the food processor. Um, you can even add a little you know, non-dairy milk or something, but I like the texture without any liquid added. So I'll just mix that around a little bit. Yeah, I was trying to think of other for the bundle, like other ways to promote it, um, other than like online social media and stuff. So I uh last night I printed out, I like designed some flyers for it and printed all those out. And I'm gonna go around later and um because there's a lot of vegan places in Portland. So I'm gonna go around and um see if I can like put up some flyers and that's cool. Try to get the word out that way too. 
Okay, so. So I know you said you've been vegan 45 years. Were you, yeah. like, were you like a junk food vegan for a oh while? Oh my God, for 26 of the years. So I've only had, let's see how many, what's 45 minus 20, like less than 20 years of healthy eating, but almost 20 of healthy. Yeah. I'll be off uh, next July, on July 6, 2023, I'll be off sugar for 20 years. So I'm having a big celebration at Rancho La Puerta where I often teach. It's a wonderful spot in Mexico. And then we'll be having a big celebration because they don't use sugar there. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. Okay. Since I'm making the brownie and ice cream this time, I'll just put, you know, I just cut up the brownies in the little pieces and I'll just put a couple little pieces in there. It's like a mix in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what the natural milk machine, uh, not natural milk, not natural milk, uh, can't speak. Natural milk can make the ice cream, but the Ninja Creamy has a mix in button that you can oh, like yeah. mix them in. Nice. The one kind of benefit I think to the natural milk is like when you make it in the natural milk, if you can't finish it, you can refreeze it and re-spin it. But with all the other machines, it kind of can't. Can we do it? Yeah. But I have made it, I have made it in the uh in the food processor. Actually, I think I did a video a very long time ago. What are some of your favorite plant-based books or documentaries? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I really like the Game Changers one. Um, Forks Over Knives. Um, what the Health is a good one. Um, yeah, there's, gosh, there's so many. Um, Earthlings, that's a powerful documentary. Yeah, I didn't watch that one because as an ethical vegan, I figured, what am I, well, how's that going to help me, you know? Yeah. I, I think know. I watched that, the very, you know, uh, like years ago when I was first, first, tra like, changing my lifestyle and everything, but that kind of stuff's just too hard for me to watch now. <laughs> Rachel just got the Ninja Creamy, going to get it going today. What's cool about the Ninja Creamy is you can literally take unsweetened applesauce. You can put cinnamon and vanilla in if you want and freeze it. And it's like, it's ice cream when you spin it. It's so cool. Same thing with canned pineapple. You can't do that with the other machines. It's just kind of unique in that way. Yeah, it's unique in that way. So you just use the canned pineapple and it basically just turns it into like a sort yeah, of- Yeah, it's, I, it's, it blew my mind when I read about it. I, it, it's like Disneyland Dole Whip, but without the sugar and the chemicals. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, yeah. You don't need all that at it. You know, the fruit's sweet enough, but once you, once you change, you know, my taste buds definitely change when I, cause I was so used to the processed sugar, but once I stopped, once I took that out and started having more natural sweeteners, your taste buds definitely adjust and um, you start to crave the more natural things. And I think once you, you know, the other stuff tends to, um, seem too sweet. Like if I were to eat, you know, some processed sugar or some candy or something, something that I used to eat, it would just, it, it wouldn't be good because my body just not, doesn't want that anymore. Here's the ice cream here. Just topped it with some more brownies. Oh, yeah, that, well, you could eat that for breakfast if you wanted. 
Yeah, I make I don't do the brownie and ice cream for breakfast. Often you could, but I I eat an ice cream for breakfast even even when it's you know 40 degrees outside. I'll still be having smoothie bowls and nice cream and I like doing yeah, an ice cream's good because you can make it, you know, you can add in frozen strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, uh mangoes good with it, um, and make it, you know, pretty customizable. Um, and it's a nice yeah. show us the cookies again. Here. You got to talk because it, it, if you don't talk, it just goes to me on Zoom. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, here are the cookies. Um, topped it with more of the caramel on there. And yeah, these are good to for like an on the go snack or breakfast. Um, or yeah, you can, you know, make them and at the beginning of the week and put them in a container and keep them and just have them during the week. Um, you, you could probably put the caramel date sauce on the nice oh, yeah. as well. That, that's a good idea. I'll probably do that. <laughs> I do have Why caramel. not? Caramel. Why not throw it on there? Yeah. It's just dates. Wow. <laughs> Gail says it looks delicious and it's amazing that it's healthy too. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, you know, I think it's a good way to, um, cause I make, I mean, my, my recipe book is mainly desserts, but obviously, you know, I make a lot more than um, I make a lot of savory recipes too. And I, my next book, I plan to have more like um, all kinds of recipes in there, uh, things for lunches, dinners, things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good thing about what I like doing with my dessert recipes and like sweeter things. Cause I like to show people like, you know, you can, you don't have to have animal products to enjoy a sweet, a sweet dessert or even, you know, the refined sugar and all that. You don't need that in it. You can still enjoy a decadent, decadent dessert without all of that other crap. So. Um. Well, you are a kindred spirit, my friend, because that's exactly what I've been saying for over almost 20 years. Now I teach dessert master classes and show people that you can make healthy and delicious desserts with the fruit, the whole fruit, nothing but the whole fruit. You don't need sugar ever. You don't need flour ever. And you don't need oil or salt ever. And you can, like you say, it's some of the best desserts on the planet. Yeah, just look at the cookie dough brownie cake I made and that'll. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I know. I, I wish I, I, I'll i see if I'll, I'll you know what, if it, with your permission, I, you know, because we we create the thumbnail afterwards with your permission. If you get me that photo, I can ask the, I don't do my own thumbnails. I have no artistic talent, but that could be the thumbnail if you want. I can send it to you. Yeah, for sure. that'd be amazing. Well, you, you are just, uh, you're precious and thank you for being vegan and creating healthy recipes and doing it so young. You have a wonderful, healthy life ahead of you. Thank you so much. I thank you for having me on. And yeah, I'd love to come on again whenever. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially when you have something like another book or another bundle, or just because if, if you're going to make recipes like this, for sure. For sure. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, here's a comment I just saw. I was going to let you go, but since you're young, maybe you can answer this because maybe you could get into the mind of a young man. Um, Anne says, Oh, no. Yeah. Anne says, I love when Chef AJ has lovely young people on so my college age son can see he is plant based when I'm trying to get him to move all the vegan junk stuff. What would you advise this young man? Um, so he's plant based, but he's still having vegan junk. junk. junk yeah. Food. So I was the same way. I think, um, yeah, when I first went vegetarian and then vegan, I was still like a, I was having all the fake meats and like it is an easy way to transition, I would say. Um, and it's there's lots of options out there, especially nowadays with all the, you know, plant-based, um, vegan meats and cheeses and all that. And it is an easy way to transition. And I don't think it's, you know, a bad thing. And everyone, you know, everyone has a choice to eat what they want to eat for sure. But if you're trying to be as healthy as, as you can, and, um, I would say, yeah, there's, there's lots of ways to make, um, make different, you know, there's whole, there's ways to make whole food plant-based versions of anything really. Um, you just have to, there's so many recipes online and there's so many different foods out there. And I think it's okay to, you know, have the process stuff once in a while, but to just try to really focus on whole foods for the main part and, um, find, you know, if there's certain, um, the guy you're talking about there, if there's certain things that he likes to eat, just focus on a couple different things and, um, figure out a way, how can I make this like a whole food plant-based version? Um, and slowly cut, once you slowly start to cut out the processed food, your body and but your body will crave what you're, what you give it. So, you know, once you start having more of the real whole foods and less of the processed stuff, you're going to, it is a transition. It's a process. Some people do it overnight. Some people it takes, it takes months or years to do. So, um, 
but yeah, it's just slow changes here and there, I think are, are key. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I did a complete 180. Like I was for 20, 21 years or so, I was living off processed food and junk. And now I eat high raw, whole food, plant-based, you know, gluten-free vegan. So it's definitely possible. Um, yeah. And it's definitely worth it because you'll feel, you'll feel better. And, you know, it's a whole, you'll feel happier and you'll just feel better in general, for sure. Once you nourish your body and yeah. you're probably too young, but have you ever heard of Lauren Bacall? I have not. Okay. Yeah. Cause you're really young. She, uh, have you ever heard of Humphrey Bogart? Probably not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, somebody paid you a lovely compliment saying you have Lauren Bacall eyes. Look her up because she was a just a, a bombshell in the, I'm guessing, 50s. Okay, I'll look her up. <laughs> yes, you're so cute. Well, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. Have a, have a great day. Okay, and tell us your socials because if people oh, want yeah. to see that picture of that cake, they're going okay. to have to go, I think, to your Instagram page, right? Instagram is at plant creations it's like a double underscore so it's just plant double underscore creations and then my website is myplantcreations.com um and so those are the two main places i'll i very active on instagram i post there every day so um yeah great thanks amanda this was wonderful thank you have a good one yep we're showing people you can satisfy your sweet tooth for the holidays or any time with the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in about 45 minutes. I have another show today with Kelly Capel, and she's going to be making another fabulous recipe. Take care.